really cool feature that not a lot of people know about in Excel is actually called data validation. And I think it's actually misnamed. It's called data validation because before you try to put something into a cell, once you have data validation set, it's going to make sure that it meets requirements that you set up. So, for example, if you want to spell a department name the same way every time, like corporate manager or retail or whatever, or a product description, you always want to be at uh, have it be the same so that in a database, the stuff will sort together, filter together. Uh, if you want controlled entry into a cell, use data validation. I actually think the feature should be called drop down lists because that's what you're creating. You're creating drop down lists so that when you click on them, you can select something to drop into a cell instead of uh, typing it out and risking having it be different than what you want it to be. So here's how it works we've got a little scenario set up here where when people first join the company, they can put their starting time, their time in, and their quitting time, their time out in the individual cells. It does have supervisory oversight, but since we're such a small informal company, until we guys get these guys set up uh, with payroll, they just do this for their first week. Now we tell them, we say, hey, look, we even give this, uh, give this as a page in their employee manual on their first day of work. We say, while you're using this little spreadsheet-driven way of doing it. Please only we use one of these time in values and please only use one of these time out values. Now, it's listed here that we say if you come in at like, you know, 635, 640, 650, please use 7 a.m. as your starting time. And then in 15 minute increments, and we give them a few examples to explain that. But obviously these people aren't getting it because they're not using these values. So what we're going to do now is force them to use these values. Now let me talk just a little bit about what's going on here uh, before we get into this. Um, I have these time in values and these time out values right here so you can see them. These could be in hidden columns, they could be on a different sheet, they could be somewhere else entirely, but I'm putting them here so you can see them. The other thing that I've done is I have named these starting times. I've named the whole range uh, in and I've named these time out values out. I want you to know that because that comes into play when we're setting this up. So here's how it works. Let's set up the time and let's clean this up a little bit. Let's go ahead and center those and and gosh, let's uh, let's make these two at least the same width. Pretty that up a little bit. Yeah, see how it looks better, right? And then we'll make this column a little narrower. Just kind of bring those in a little bit. Okay, here we go. We're going to highlight these time in cells for all seven of these employees here. This feature is called data validation. Here's where you're going to find it. On the data tab, over here about a little bit more than halfway across in the data toolbox is a button called data validation or data validation if you'd prefer. If we click on that button, we get this little three tab box that pops up. Now the first thing it wants us to do is to define what is valid data. So this allow drop down list, we're going to click that and pick whatever in here we want to use uh, with frames out the way we want the data in there. And I'm going to tell you, very high percentage of the time, you have a list of what you've defined as valid data. So let's go ahead and click List. And then what it does is it gives us little, this little source box here where we can put the valid entries in it. Now, we can either put the values themselves separated by commas, we can put a cell reference, uh, or we can put a range name. So let me give you some examples of each. Let's just say that uh, the valid, different scenario here, but let's just say the valid uh, values were left, right, up, or down. You could just type those values in separated by commas in that source box. If the list already exists somewhere and you don't want to recreate it there and it's longer, then you can come over here and click and drag over a range of cells. And then what you have is the range of cells there. But you had to go click and drag. And if they're in a different place, that could be a little bit of a hassle. If you've range named them, it's super easy. You just type equals the range name, which in this case is in. So yet another wonderful use for range names. Now, let's go ahead and stage the input message. On this tab, what we're going to do is we're going to put together the message that's going to pop up when somebody clicks on this cell and it tells them what to do. So we're going to do starting time click in the title box and we're going to put starting time as the title and then the message that's going to pop up is going to be please select a 
starting time from the list. All right, now the error alert is if they don't follow the directions or they don't get them or they don't read them and they try to do you know, what they've been doing, a little message is gonna pop up. So let's go ahead and stage that message. Now, there's three types of error alerts. The way we're using data validation here is we do not want the invalid data going into the cell. So we're gonna stick with stop. That's the only one of these styles that will keep the invalid data out of the cell. So we'll just do stop. And then we're gonna say uh, try again with some exclamation points for effect. And then something to the effect of um, uh, please notice the drop down list on the right of the cell. Click the arrow and then click on a valid starting time. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now let's just say here that Steve Richards comes in and he just does what he's been doing. He just types in a starting time. What's going to happen is the error is going to pop up. It's going to say try again. Please notice the drop down list on the right side of the cell. Click the arrow and then click on a valid starting time. So we'll go ahead and click on retry. You've got to get rid of the invalid entry and then hopefully he follows directions here. Clicks the drop down and then remembers of course that he got those lists of times uh, on his first day of work, so he just selects seven o'clock. All right, let's just roll through these steps one more time for timeout. So we'll just highlight the cells, data, data validation. We'll make the settings here be a list equals out input message time out. Please select a valid time out and then error alert will just do something basically the same we'll say please try again wah 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 you know kind of like the charlie brown teacher and then say uh, please oh please use the drop down arrow to pick a valid time because you know they're just not getting it we need to kind of put those capital letters in there they kind of feel like they're being yelled at you know just a little bit and then we click OK and then in this case you know work the same way from the standpoint of the messages and and selecting those times and everything now one thing is sometimes when people put data validation within individual ranges or a large group of cells it's sometimes done after invalid data. A lot of invalid data has been getting in there. So they put these controls in place, uh, if you will, when the horse has been out of the barn for a while. So now by definition, there's some invalid stuff that needs to be fixed here. So one visual tool that can help you fix that is if you highlight those cells that have data validation set on them, and then come up here to the data validation button, notice there's a drop down. This time what we're gonna do is click the drop down and we're going to circle the invalid data. Now here there's just six values that need to be corrected. If it's got a circle around it, it means it's invalid and needs to be fixed. So we're just gonna go through, hit the drop down arrows and fix it. Now this is a small data set, so it's not gonna take a while to you know, fix it manually. I mean, if there was a bigger problem like with hundreds of entries, we would probably have to devise a formula driven way or a find and replace driven way to fix it. But not the case this time. We just went ahead and fixed everything so these people can get paid. And then if you just highlight those cells again, circle invalid data again. If there's no circles, then everything's fixed. So think of data validation as a great tool to use in a database where you want to make sure that values and only certain values are selected. So key fields in databases where you always want the department or the product name or process step to be spelled the same way every time. Try data validation. That can make it so that the data cleanup you have to do on the back end of data entry is much less. Data validation. Boom shakalaka.